all all the three are going to give you the same thing so basically what will you do is you will say whether this is 10 or 12 i make up 10 pairs so whether this is 12 or 10 i make up 10 pairs similarly whether this is 10 and 10 i make up 10 pairs so what how do you solve in a way is that you are equating what's inside so to find the min you are equating what's inside so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just equate ax1 equal to bx2 and i'm going to say this is what my equilibrium is going to be so here suppose the function is min of 4x1 comma 5x2 so i'll say that 4x1 should be equal to 5x2 so x2 multiplied by 5 that is 5 pairs of x2 or x1 multiplied by 4 4 pairs of x1 both of them give you the same utility and that is this kink point which is there okay so if i have to plot this thing it goes as follows so if 4x1 is equal to 5x2 i have x1 by x2 is equal to 5 by 4 is this clear so let's plot this so when x1 is 5 x2 is 4 so this is the king point so this is my indifference curve similarly i can go above with the same ratio so when x1 is 10 which would lie somewhere here x2 should be 8 and this would be my second indifference curve so this is this is how i will get the amount of kink so at kink x1 should be 5 and x2 should be 4 or x1 should be 10 and x2 should be 8 or any such multiple okay this is how you solve so i want you to i'm giving you a question i want you to plot min of 7x1 comma 2x2 so do it and i'll come back so let's solve so 7x1 is equal to 2x2 and this means x1 by x2 is equal to 2 by 7 Am I okay with this? So, if I solve this, when x1 is 2, x2 should be 7 and this is how you get your king point. So, this is the indifference curve. Okay? Alright. So, now I want to go to substitute goods and substitute goods utility would look like ax1 plus bx2. So, in perfect substitute, A was equal to B was equal to 1. Now, I will have some random values of A and B. So, again, what I am concerned about is the total utility. I am not concerned about the individual consumptions. And hence, I would always want to consume the good which is cheaper. So, supposedly, if price of... I will do it in detail and I will compare it with MRS also. So, that, that comes in the next chapter. But as of now... So, if price of good 1 is less than price of good 2, you will consume entirely good 1. And if price of good 1 is greater than price of good 2, you will consume entirely good 2. So, now let's just talk about the shape of the indifference curve. So, supposedly my utility is fixed at 10. So, all that I am saying is that now Ax1 plus Bx2 is 10. So, if I have to plot this, how do I do? Very simple. Put x2 equal to 0. What do you get? x1 is 10 by a. Put x1 equal to 0. x2 is 10 by b. So, this is your indifference curve. So, let's do it with some values. Suppose my utility function is given by 2x1 plus x2. So, I have to fix the utility at some level. Let's fix the utility at 20. So, what does my indifference curve look like? So, x1, x2. When x2 is 0, x1 is 10. 
and when x1 is 0 x2 is 20 so this is your indifference curve all right so now i want to talk about the third thing so one we have talked about complements we have talked about substitutes now i would want to talk about quasi linear preferences okay so quasi linear preferences okay so quasi means partially so i want to talk about goods which are partially linear so the function looks something like this so suppose the utility function is root x1 plus x2 or the utility function is x1 plus root x2 so this is the linear part this is the non-linear part this is the linear part this is the non-linear part or something like x1 plus log x2 so this is the linear part and this is the non-linear part so how do you solve for these codes and how how do you plot these codes so we have to learn everything about them so first thing i want to find out the mrs of the code that's the simplest thing that i'll do so let's take my utility function to be x1 plus root x2 and let's find the slope for this function which is the mrs and mrs is going to be mu x1 by mu x2 so this is going to be differentiate with respect to x1 and differentiate with respect to x2 so when i differentiate it with respect to x1 i get 1 when i differentiate it with respect to x2 i get 1 by 2 root x2 so this entire thing i can solve and get 2 root x2 now this is very very important why because this tells you that the mrs is independent of the amount of good one so mrs doesn't really depends on the slope so the slope doesn't really depends on the amount of good one and this is very very important so this is the first thing that we did now step two plotting so let's take the utility level fixed at some level 10 suppose x2 is 0 what is x1 10 when x2 is 0 x1 is 10 now suppose x1 is 0 what is x2 100 right which is very very high so if this is a 10 by 10 box it's 10 times this so if I have to plot this, it's going to be this. If I take 10 here, it's going to be 100 is going to be here. Okay. So understand that this would this curve would look something like this. something like this so so the, the steepness is going to be very very high because you're going from right hundred towards ten okay so if I have to plot a lot of so it's going to be something like this and this so basically the curves are going to look like this and because the slope that I am finding out is not depending on the amount of good 1 that is what we found so I should be able to draw 
a straight line.